four years back, when Narendra Modi and BJP were in the electioneering mode, one section which came out in support of them is the peasantry. And there was specific reasons for that. Narendra Modi and the BJP promise literally the wish list of the farmers. In fact, if you take the BJP manifesto, it would read almost like the charter of demands of the All India Kisan Sabha, except for land reforms, almost on all other issues there were assurances. And through more than 300 meetings in which he himself were present, and many more where his 3D images spoke to the people, it was promised that his government would usher in Achedin for the peasantry and the rural poor. It was promised that farmers would be given remunerative prizes according to the Swaminathan Commission's recommendation that is at least 50% more than the cost of production. And it was also said that farmers' suicides would no longer happen in Modi's India. John mentioned how in 100 days we got to know what is going to happen in the coming days. In fact, we all knew before itself what is going to happen to this country under this government. Within a week, we met the agriculture minister and said, please implement the Swaminathan Commission's recommendation of C2 plus 50 percent. And he told us, that is just an election time promise to get the votes. It is not going to be implemented. Why do you take it so seriously? And within some time, the BJP president said it is a Chunavi Jumla, and they went to the Supreme Court and claimed that this cannot be implemented because it distorts the market. So very clearly, we know in whose favor this government stands. Four years now, the number of farmers' suicides, the latest figures have not been given. A lot of the figures have been fudged. Many states are showing that zero suicides. But the figures given so far is 36,000, of which around 12,000 in the first three years have happened just in Maharashtra. Malnutrition, it's a national shame. During a protest in Maharashtra, I found a newspaper report which said that about 9,000 children below the age of five had died due to malnutrition in, five, in a period of five months. I thought it is an exaggerated report. When I looked into what happened in the one year, 21,000 children below the age of five had died due to malnutrition in the state of Maharashtra. The status in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh is, is much worse. So now, another promise was that farmers' land would not be taken without the consent of the farmers and agriculture workers. Within six months, a land acquisition ordinance was brought, which said there is no need for any consent. There is no need for social impact assessment. There is no need to stick to the food security, safeguards on food security, which were there in the 2013 Act. Against this attack on the land of the peasantry, we managed to build a massive issue-based unity called the Bhumi Adhikar Andolan, in which more than 300 organizations came together and with massive protests across the country and also ensuring that the political parties take a position on this, the BJP government was forced to withdraw this ordinance, though it tried thrice to bring in uh, this ordinance. Now they are trying to push through the act through different BJP rule states. And it is to be noted here that the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act and Santal Paragana Tenancy Act, which were the result of the struggles of Birsha Munda and Sido Kanu, that the British imperialist government had agreed to pass such a law, this BJP government is now, has now gone ahead and is scrapping that to ensure that the Adivasi land can be taken over. Literally, the potential area under the threat of acquisition is almost, I would say, three times the size of Britain. And it is very clearly 
to promote real estate profiteering that these kind of different industrial corridors are coming up. We, it is totally intransparent. We just don't know what is the kind of industry that is going to come. Even CAG reports have mentioned, especially in the case of Odisha, that about 92% of the land acquired is remaining unutilized for the more than five years. So that is the situation we are facing in our country. And our friends in Gujarat, the farmers in Gujarat say, this is no Gujarat model. It is actually the Modani model, the Mo uh, Modi and Adani's Modani model of corporate loot of land, jung jal jungle, zameen, and also the mineral resources. That is what is happening in our country. After this attack on the land of the peasantry, another major attack has been on the cattle wealth of, of, the, of the peasantry. We have seen how it was already spoken uh, here, how in the name of Goraksha there has been attacks, how cat, uh, different restrictions on cattle trade has been brought. We have challenged it in Supreme Court and it had to be withdrawn later on. But also how uh, different free trade agreements are being entered into to ensure that milk and milk products would come into India with, without any import duties. That is going to hit, according to Amul, uh, which is our most successful cooperative, it is going to hit more than 90 million Indian farmers in a major way. But this government is not bothered, it is carrying on with these policies. Unfortunately for the Gorakshaks and for the Sang Sangi Gundas, the poor animals which are now a major menace for the peasantry in the, uh, that is the stray cattle menace in the entire country we are finding, especially in the north, these animals are unable to distinguish between a Gorakshak's field, a Hindu's field, and a Muslim's field. Every field is being attacked. And today, it is from those families also, people are raising a demand that this should be, um, there should be removal of these restrictions on uh, cattle trade. So they have recently come out with, but they have managed to utilize this to create a communal divide and whenever there have been united struggles these kind of attacks have increased more than 40 people have been lynched 40 farmers we have seen farmers from mewat who have been throughout generations of farmers muslim farmers who have been into dairy farming who have been attacked and killed so this is happening even against this we have been able to build a broad unity um, with different left Kisan organizations taking a lead. After demonetization, every single crop there has seen a price crash. There have been massive protests in Rajasthan, Maharashtra, in Madhya Pradesh, in Haryana, Jharkhand, different, uh, in fact, across the country. We have seen the insensitive manner in which the drought hit, uh, farmers in drought hit states of India were treated by this BJP government. Many farmers were protesting in Delhi for months together. The government did not even feel the necessity to meet them. So in uh, different states, there have been these struggles coming up in a big way. And in Mansour, the BJP government shot down six farmers who were demanding remunerative price for their crops. Against this, we managed to build a broad issue-based unity in which 190 organizations of the fa farmers came together. In fact, the defeat on the land acquisition ordinance was probably the first defeat that the Modi government faced. On the cattle trade restrictions also, they had to withdraw it, though it may not seem as big a defeat as the land acquisition ordinance in the center. Maharashtra has had, we have all witnessed the long march. People, thousands of people who marched, a large number of them Adivasis. And women in big numbers. It is the women like Sakubai and Padmavati who marched with blisters on their feet, with bleeding feet for seven days who are going to chart the course of the com uh, uh, coming, uh, history in coming days. And here we have also managed to build a broad issue-based unity against neoliberal policies as well as against the communal and caste forces. So through these struggles, we are confident that we will build an atmosphere for the defeat of the communal, anti-people, anti-farmer BJP government. 
massive struggles are, form, uh, are planned. We have already, after the long march, we are collecting 10 crore signatures on farmers' demands. On 9th August, the anniversary of Quit India movement, we are going to have a massive jail bharo across the country in which for the first time, the different Adivasi Dalit organizations, trade unions, and to our own surprise, the one rank, one pension soldiers, they have also come and they said they will extend support. So August 9th, we will have the jail borough. September 5th, we are intending to mobilize about 5 lakh Kisan agriculture workers and workers in Delhi. I have been involved with political activism for almost 30 years now. I have not seen anything during my lifetime of that nature. I think uh, probably not before also. And all of you know that the eminent journalist and activist Sainath has suggested a long march of the dispossessed to Delhi. In principle, we have accepted that. We have had meetings with different groups of the um, different farmers' organizations. And towards November end or so, most likely that will also be happening. Uh, th that protest will also be happening. Around November, there are also going to be elections in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and elsewhere. And we are confident that we, these struggles, we have taken the struggle to the enemy's de dens. And we are confident that through our struggles, an atmosphere will be created for the defeat of this anti-people, anti-peasant government. Thank you.